Young Turks, new sponsor, Squarespace. Go. Squarespace. Wait, is that a square? Speaking of nonsense, the amount of money we spend on defense. Let's do this quickly before Mike Pence, who uh, all uh, progressives should uh, uh, take note of. Uh, Barney Frank, um, uh, you know, is one of the House, uh, he's the head of the uh, House uh, Budget Committee, and one of the leading budget experts, certainly on the House side. And uh, uh, so Barney Frank, um, a Democrat from Massachusetts, um, finally says is, we for years have been afraid, both sides, as Cenk would say, because they are bought and paid for. I think one side's bought and paid for more, but you can argue. So. Uh, Cenk's point earlier, by the way, in the beginning of the show, that nothing they do has anything to do with, except for who gave them money. That is too cynical of you, as far as I'm concerned. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, defense spending has just been off limits. In fact, the Obama administration is afraid to talk about it. Um, but finally, we have a movement where it's at least getting discussed, because we cannot cut this deficit mm -hmm. down significantly and get toward balancing the budget without looking at defense spending. Um, so uh, Barney Frank uh, finally starts talking about it, and he starts talking about it specifically, not vaguely. So here's what uh, Barney Frank uh, had to say. Uh, these uh, types of restrictions, says uh, Barney Frank, on domestic spending uh, with unlimited spending for the war, and you have to talk about both, he says, it's a great mistake. And the liberal community has to focus more on Afghanistan, on Iraq, and NATO, says Barney Frank. NATO, he says, is a great drain on our treasury, and NATO, and, and that drain on our treasury serves no strategic purpose. So he's pointing out that, hey man, look, the Cold War is over. We formed NATO after World War II mm -hmm. as an effort to sort of have a block of countries to, to, uh, to stand against Soviet aggression. We don't really need to worry about Soviet aggression, and we, don't, we need to rethink whether there's an attack on France from someone else. Do we need to declare war on that country, which is what NATO says. Like, that's not really relevant, and if it's not really relevant, why are we spending all this money right. on NATO? I agree with him. Yeah, of course, and it's at least a conversation we have to go. A 20 percent, uh, according to Lawrence Korb, the a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, and he deals with uh, military readiness, 20 percent of the baseline defense budget is NATO-related, about $100 billion a year. That's real money. Jeez, $100 billion a year goes to NATO, and there was an actual debate about $6 billion for health insurance for 9-11 first responders. Like, let's put that in perspective. Yeah, and by the way, that's, a, that's, that's 20 percent. That's $100 billion. It's, it's hard to pinpoint the exact number since many of the assets the U.S. provides NATO we also use for other purposes. But uh, overall, the defense budget, fiscal year 2010, I think we have these numbers too, $533.8 billion, $534 billion for the defense budget, fiscal year 2010. And that, of course, because this is how we roll, we're not going to include the wars. So throw the wars in, just chuck them in, because then apparently we're using some of our defense money is spent on the wars. With the wars, $663.8 billion on defense money. Wow. Uh, more than the combined, so that's more money than how many other countries combined. Like we're number one, so in the next 17, two through 18, I've now given it away. <laughs> how many other countries do you think are involved? Say 17. 17. That's more money than those 17 other countries spend combined. Mm -hmm. And se they seem fine. They seem able, y yes. they seem able to defend themselves. Uh, the Britain recently cut their defense spending 8%. It's not even that much. 8% reduction in defense spending. Uh, that cost about 17,000 personnel. Time Magazine pointed out maybe we're not going to have, you know, when we have 100,000 troops, maybe there aren't going to be 10,000 British troops there next time that we engage in something. Look, Barney Frank talking about this is great, but is it conceivable that in any time in the near future, or any time in the distant future, we're going to cut defense spending? I, I think I think yes. You but, think yes? Yeah, and one of the reasons why is because there's some strange, not strange, well, strange, yeah, bi bipartisan effort for it. You got Barney Frank, mm -hmm. uh, the most influential Democrat uh, uh, regarding uh, defense spending right now, um, and how we deal with the budget in general. That's really what his, where his influence is. But what are we, how are we going to allocate funds um, on the House side? And then other Republicans, uh, many of them in the Tea Party, this is where there's some common ground between sanity and the Tea Party. Uh, Tom Coburn, senator from Oklahoma, wants to look at cutting defense spending. Johnny Isaacson of Georgia, Bob Corker of Tennessee, 
uh, and then Congressman uh, Paul Ryan of Wisconsin, Alan West, that uh, rep elect Tea Party, the Black Tea Party uh, 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 representative elect from uh, Florida, Mike Pence, who I'm about to talk about, Mark Kirk, the uh, senator elect from uh, Illinois, and then other Democrats as well. You know, again, it's the third rail. It's one of the third rails. Social Security was, and now uh, uh, defense spending. That, and, and again, this is how it begins. You start to have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. There gets to be some groundswell that you change the nature of the debate about it. And then you force defense contractors. Look, you're probably right. They'll probably win in the end. But even if you slow the rate of growth of defense spending, it helps. And then who knows what happens in 20 years. Right. It's not going to happen in 20 years unless you start talking about it now. It's not going to happen overnight in the year 2030. It's just difficult to imagine them cutting defense spending when every single time a politician brings it up, there's always the question or, you know, the accusation that the politician is weak on national sure. security. That's why it's really important that there are Republicans involved, too. And that's the benefit of the Tea Party. Right. The Tea Party has given political cover to a giant swath because they're now voters that you can point to, hey, they got to cut everything. And if you're uh, rational and we're a Tea Party supporter, you recognize, hey, if we really care about reducing the size of government, Six hundred and sixty-three billion dollars a year. Maybe, maybe we got to look at this. Right. New sponsor at the Young Turks, Squarespace. They help you build websites. They've got twenty-four-seven support, and they've built some of the largest websites in the world. They have an iPhone app, so you can edit your website on the go. TYT promo code: ten percent off for the life of your order. Squarespace.